Right before we jump into this video, if you haven't downloaded my gear vault just yet, what are you waiting for? It's the best way to input, organize, and protect your gear, and you can get insurance through it. Well, what happens if, oh, I wish I had my gear vault. Go download it. Now let's get to the video. Jared Poland, Fronos Photo. Dot com, and this is a review, unboxing, and sniff test of the Fuji 50 to 140 2.8 R L M O I S W R W T F lens. Now, it doesn't actually have the W T F at the end, it just has everything else before it because there are so many different options that this lens comes with. And when I say options, different features like the R stands for a ring, L M stands for I have no clue. OIS is for optical image stabilization, and the WR is for the weather sealing. Let's unbox it and see what we have inside. Inside, we have stuff written in Japanese that I'm not reading. Then we have a user's manual in 32 different languages. I'm not reading it. Then we have, ooh, a nice little soft bag that I don't want. And then you've got a shaker. This is in case you need to make some music with your lens. You can just be like. That's right, I know how to make music. Do not eat this. There's that, you have a nice black insert here. Moving the black insert, black piece of cardboard. That is a beautiful, oh, that's a beautiful piece of cardboard. They did a, gr oh, that smells lovely. Lovely, lovely, lovely. And here is the lens. There it is, in the plastic. Let's take it out, let's. Not rip the bag, I ripped the bag. Go figure. Oh well, I ripped the bag. Move you, move the box. This is it. Let's put the lens hood on the end and boom. This is your 50 to 140 2.8. Now it's much lighter and also less expensive than what you will find from Nikon, Sony, or Canon. Now you have to remember that this is built for the X series Fuji cameras. I tested this lens out on the X-H1. That is a crop sensor camera. So that makes this 50 to 140 a, let me double check, 76 to 213 millimeter, 35 millimeter equivalent. So that's a very nice range that you get, but you have to multiply it because you're putting it onto a cropped sensor. Now, right off the rip, I love the way that these rings feel. They did a really nice job. It feels nice and secure. It's easy to turn. It's not like you have to turn it 23 times in order to get all the way through the zoom range. So that's a good thing. The focus ring is out at the end, unlike what Nikon has done. You've got a foot right here that you could use. I would not need this lens on a monopod. So I basically would unscrew this, take it off, put it in the box and never use it. Personally, I wouldn't need it. You've got your lens hood. You have your lens cap. Now this is 72 millimeters. Most 70 to 200s from other manufacturers are 77, but because this is built for the X-H1 or the X series on Fuji, it's smaller, lighter, easier to manage. Now it's still 1450 bucks, but that's better than spending 1899 for the version two from Canon or 2100 for their latest one or 2600 from Sony or 2800 from Nikon. So you're saving some money there because you don't have to build the optics for a full frame body. Now who's this lens for? This is for anybody that wants to shoot sports. Is it really meant for nature? Not really, because it doesn't give you a lot of reach, and you can see that when I'm trying to shoot the bald eagle at a distance. Couldn't really get through that fence where a longer lens, like a 150 to 600 or a 100 to 400, would have given me more reach to reach out and grab the bird. In this case, with this, it wasn't really the best choice in that situation. But this would be part of my Hebrew Trinity, which would consist of an equivalent of a 14 to 24, a 24 to 70, and a 70 to 200. This is a staple lens that if you have this Fuji system and you are shooting professionally or you want the best quality, you're gonna pick up one of these 50 to 140s. Now here's something I really don't like about this lens. Now this is personal preference. I don't like the aperture ring. I do not like having the option to control it like it's 1987 again, though some people would like to be able to control their aperture to take more control over their settings to feel like they're setting the shutter speed, the aperture, or the ISO the old way because that's how the X-H1 and some of the other Fujis allow you to make changes. Now what I did is I locked it in on A. 
because A would allow me to go ahead and change it with my front finger so I could change the aperture that way. But I did find sometimes that I was accidentally turning this ring and I don't want that to happen when I'm shooting because I don't want to mess up the aperture which is going to mess up my exposure because it's just, it can get in the way. But again, it's personal preference. I don't like it. Some of you may like it. Now something I just noticed and I didn't even know this lens had when I was shooting is an OIS switch. Now I shot this lens all day and didn't realize that I had the OIS on because one, it's quiet and it doesn't make any noise when you're shooting. It's super quiet when it's focusing. But the other thing is it's got a really small switch right down here. It has on and off. I didn't even notice that it was there. So for the most part, you're just gonna leave it on and it's gonna work in conjunction with the in-body stabilization of the camera that you're using if it has it. Now let's take a look at this shot of the flowers. I got as close as I could with the autofocus still working just to show you what the bokeh would look like in the background as well as how close I could get to it. And the colors look popping, they look contrasty, they look sharp, and the autofocus was pretty darn fast. I didn't miss things because I was waiting for the autofocus. Now keep in mind, that's gonna be dependent upon the body that you're on and how the autofocus operates inside of that actual camera. But for me, it did really well when I was shooting the skateboarders at a distance. Uh, like I said, it's real easy to go around this zoom ring. It moves, it's short, but you can get through a long range, which is so much better than having to twist and turn with some of the other lenses that I've used. And I'm happy with the results that I got at the zoo as well as at the skate park. But now I wanna sniff it, because the sniff test you know is super important. Oh my God, that's so good. It smells like that burnt rubber. Not like from a car that just burned their rubber, but like, you know if you give somebody that thing, if you twist their arm with two hands, we can't use the term that they used to use, so I don't know the new politically correct term, but if you did that, it would feel like that. We'll call it rug burn. It's like rug burn. If you went and slid across the rug, that's the smell. Not a good smell, but not a bad smell because some people are actually into that. Now, I tested this out at its widest at 50 as well as 150. 40 when shooting the brick wall at both 2.8 and f8. Now the lines are super straight on the wall, but you do see a little bit of vignetting in the corners, which is kind of normal for these type of lenses. Honestly, it's normal for most type of lenses. I don't mind having vignetting around the outside. I care more about the edge to edge sharpness, but I've made these raw files along with the other raw files from the zoo and the skate park available for you to download so that you can pixel peep and decide whether or not this is good enough for you or not. I also did a little test at 140, which is the longest end of this zoom range, with the OIS off on the lens and also the in-body stabilization off so that you can see how it works for video with the OIS on and then with the OIS off. Now I'm not sure how many of you are gonna be shooting video with this type of lens, but knowing that you have the capability to do so is definitely worthwhile so you have it. Now at the end of the day, there's not a lot of choices on the Fuji side for their high-end glass. You have to make up your mind and decide, am I investing a lot of money in a crop sensor system? Because if they come out with a full frame body, this lens, though it may attach to it and work in cropped sensor mode, it won't take advantage of the full frame sensor. But it's a very good lens. It's the top of the line lens that they make, like I said. It's sharp, it's vibrant, it's colorful, which is similar to vibrant, and it's fast focusing, and it has the OIS. So, pretty good. I like what I was able to get out of it. Oh, and I also just realized I skipped and didn't mention that this would make for a great portrait lens. I love the 70 to 200 type of equivalent for shooting portraits because all the way out at the end, you're gonna get nice bokeh in the background and you're gonna get nice, sharp and colorful results. So again, if you'd like to download the sample images, you can go ahead and do that at the link on the screen. And if you wanna check out some other video reviews of lenses, go ahead and click on the screen somewhere right here. Don't forget to like, comment, share and subscribe. And that's where I'll leave it, jaredpolinfronosphoto.com. See ya.